All right, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight um, for this ill-conceived live stream. We were originally just going to go hang out over here and make a video so I could just post it for, for YouTube talking about these. These, do you want to hold it up there? These uh, swages, they're so-called, uh, for uh, MAGFest 2017. So for MAGFest 2017, I guess it was actually back at MAG Labs back in, was it September? Yeah. Uh, we had this idea where all of a sudden we're like, you know what? We can actually make badges for everybody at a reasonable price. And there was a whole lot of contention of like, well, they won't have credentials because they don't all have custom silk screens, so they can't really be used as badges. So they didn't want to do it, and then it was complicated, and so I kind of, you know, got distracted from it. But Mark here was willing to uh, kind of take that and really run with it. Um, so, ooh, there we go. The uh, these these badges themselves, if you wanna, if you've seen them, like from the other picture, they have an ESP. All right, you can hold it up yeah, there. Here's one of the fresh ones. Yeah, they have a uh, <laughs> an ESP twelve E module right there, and uh, that module is just an ESP eighty two sixty six. So yes, we purchased two thousand ESP eighty two sixty six ESP twelve E modules for this project, um, which worked out really well as far as things that work are concerned, but we did have a whole lot of problems. So the whole thing started back in September. Um, now I'm gonna pull up some pictures here real quick. Uh, go bump that down. Uh, the whole thing started out back in September and um, we had some uh, basic designs, things that we had as an idea. Um, actually make sure you guys can, oops, there we go. We, we had some like basic ideas for what we wanted to do for the badges. Um, we were like, yeah, we could do it with an ESP12E. Um, we could have these sweet buttons that look really good, that, that these are nice and they feel good and they click. And, um, and unfortunately, uh, these are not the buttons that we used and not because we didn't want to. We, uh, we kind of got stuck with these dun, dun, uh, like funky little buttons and somewhere in China there's an office with 16,000 of these little, uh, these little red buttons right here. Um, so, say it again? The best buttons. Yeah, the best buttons. There's 16,000 of these sitting in some office in China and uh, I, how I wish that they could have been on our board but you know. Mm. I'm pretty sure it was my fault, but you know, there's still uh, some questions. Get blame doesn't lie, it's my fault. Well, yeah, but where you got the, the footprint, always check your footprints, triple check your footprints, or you know, yeah, yeah. we should, probably should have gotten these things test run first if we had thought ahead. If, yeah, we ended up pushing this off a fair bit later than we thought we would. I had finals, Charles was doing, I guess that was IAPA. Yeah. So we were, we barely pulled it off in the end, but I was happy we did. So we actually did have some designs, like we wanted to do just the chip only, so this is an ESP8285 board right here. Um, and that, that, I mean, they, they both work pretty well, um, but in the end, just for the sake of making things simple with the FCC, we did stick with the ESP12 E module. Um, otherwise, it would have just been a complete nightmare for us to try to get something that was uh, uh, FCC certified. And we, we did pretty much uh, abandon trying to use these particular badges right here. Um, and uh, it, it did get the idea across though, and we did get the, the okay from, from MAGFest. And so Mark went and he designed uh, this board here, and we, we told them, yes, okay, go, go get them made. That'll be, that'll be perfect, just, just go make it happen, we'll, we'll be set. And then we get the boards, they get them printed, and then I get this email at like midnight, just a couple of like, I mean, I don't know, it was probably, uh, let's see, it was Noon. 15. So that was about 20 days before MAGFest starts. And right in here, they email like, we have problem with assembly. And I'm like, uh-oh, oh no. And so I'm thinking like, oh, okay, so this'll be okay. Um, um, I'll send them a video showing me bending the leads underneath the part and it'll be fine. We'll just take the switches and we'll bend the leads underneath and then they'll fit on the pads, right? Right? So I actually got somebody in China uh, to go and, and bend the leads underneath the package and they showed that no, this, this will not work. Uh, this, this is just very, very sad. 
At any rate, so no, this did not work. I guess some things we should mention first is that uh, we are actually allowed to say who it was. It was uh, the, the, the contractor in China was Electro. Um, and they, they have done a really good job with other commercial projects I've done in the past. And, uh, and Mike over at Electro just kind of just, I mean, he completely busted his butt for this. It was just amazing the amount of effort they were willing to put in at the last minute to make this thing uh, happen. Um, so finally, uh, on the 21st, they sent us this picture. And we're like, okay, okay. And they had like so many questions. And, and all, I, all I could really do, um, here, I'll, I'll make the motion to the camera so you guys can see it. Ship it! Just ship it! Ship it! Ship it! Ship it! Ship it! Ship, 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 ship! And I could not care less what was wrong at this point. They just needed to ship them. And so they did. And so things were just completely panicked. And, uh, and they were shipping them to us. And there were, you know, tons of like little rough things here and there. We didn't quite get the board specified right for being uh, 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 cut nicely, so they were kind of sharp. And there were tons of like little problems. But but sure enough, uh, then like you know, come the uh, the thirtieth here, I got some in my hand, and it wasn't actually me. Who was it? There was got seven the first boxes pack? of them. I'm betting you guys have never seen this many ESPs in one place before. I would, I don't know, I bet you somebody at Espresso has seen this many ESPs in one place before, but I'm sure there's not that many people. Um, at any rate, it was just mountains of, of these that just arrived nicely in these little bubble wrap, bo bubble wrap boxes, and we actually went and got them picked up directly from, um, from DHL. And yeah, we started with a run, I think, of 500, and we were still waiting on the other 1,500 to arrive. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah so MAGFest <laughs> officially, I believe, starts on Thursday, and we got the other 1,500 of them on Tuesday. We didn't have our firmware finished yet. We were still working out the final bugs, and none of these were programmed at that point. Yeah, all they did was we did at least get uh, Electro, what they were willing to do. Um, What's well, Electro, right? I'm not getting this yeah. all wrong. Yeah, Electro. <laughs> we were able to, they were able to plug in batteries and make sure it blunk blue. And if it blunked blue, they put it in a box and they shipped it. <laughs> that was that was wonderful. Speaking so, of batteries. Oh yeah. yes, yes. Let's let's go show that. Uh, yeah. So we did some research. Uh, it turns out the cheapest batteries you can get are from IKEA, but a little more convenient and only like half a penny each more. You can get it from Costco. So like 200 kilos of AA batteries from Costco. Like what? They come in piece? flats like this, and I think we got five, maybe seven flats like that. Yeah. It so was that was amazing. Quite the shopping trip. Yeah, I was really surprised. Was 4,000 batteries, so. Yeah. I would have expected um, like China to be cheaper, yeah. but it just was not the case. Like we could not get them imported from China cheaper than we could get them from Costco, at which point we said, okay. Shooting weight. And well, that's uh, like, you know. A tenth of them. Yes, well, not, not all of them. We got several of them on a table together, and this was uh, with me furiously typing away, trying to write some <laughs> firmware for them. Um, kind of a funny thing about that is that we, Mark here started on a uh, free RTOS firmware for them, um, and it, it was kind of working somewhat for what we wanted to do, but I really, really, I really wanted the ability to to send broadcast packets, like not broadcast like UDP packets, but like raw 80211 like broadcast packets. This is like uh, where it doesn't even, buy, it, whether or not you're connected to Wi-Fi or anything else, I don't care, it's, as long as it's like on that channel, it will get it and it will respond. Um, and so like I'm furiously typing away, totally just scrapped all the firmware, didn't use any of the stuff that I was using before, it was like two rewrites in, mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to finally get everything together like super fast with the, uh, the ESP non-OS SDK. And so here's the other thing, we were using a really old firmware um, because we couldn't get the stuff to work with the newer firmware. And then on Tuesday night, Espressif sent me uh, I think it was I think it was Angus sent me like a, a two two dot a files two binaries like try these and they're from the newest SDK and we put them in and it just worked everything just compiled we had enough room it was like 
to the wire. This is like two days. It was like a day and a half we have left, and we just mm -hmm. got. We finally got the SDK package from Espresso. Um, not that they were really bound to give it to us. They never said they would. In fact, they said they wouldn't. But somehow they decided, yeah, sure, we'll just do it anyway. And so they shipped us that, that package at the last minute. And so Mark here uh, had to figure out a way of programming 2,000 of these badges. There's a little tiny pin header. Uh, and then basically you just took um, either pogo pins or uh, just short pin strip headers. Uh, and I had a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis, which have a 3.3 volt serial port on them. And they do 2 megabit quite happily. And just wrote a little Python script that just looped forever trying to program whatever is connected. And then got a couple volunteers together, and you like push the header against the pins, just push it a little crooked, and it makes contact. Um, the Raspberry Pi would program it, and then once it finished, it would do a little rainbow dance on the LEDs, tell you it was done. Um, right. We can actually then, show you. Uh, oh, we'll do the rainbow dance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Every time you turn them on, uh, they do a little rainbow dance. Um, it kind of gives you like a LED test. Right, so yeah. all we did was just, so if you have the, the badge right here, uh, they would plug it in and as soon as it would program, it would go boink, and that was what they knew. It was like, okay, good enough, ship it. Yep. Throw it in the box. <laughs> yeah, throw it in the box. Take it to merch. <laughs> yeah, and this worked remarkably well. Uh, you basically just repeat until your thumb is bleeding and you're good. Luckily Which the badges are red, so. <laughs> yeah, speaking of bleeding. Um, oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. The peripherals on these badges, we have four LEDs and we have eight buttons. And the, the buttons are laid out as a classic game controller. So the idea was there's a little D-pad on the left, you got A, B, start, select. The problem with D-pad is with these buttons, you have to be very deliberate about pressing the buttons. And the left button in particular is right next to one of the through-hole pins from the battery pack on the back. So every time you push left, it stabs you. Um, it didn't do that with the original buttons, but I messed up the, the layout, so it's my fault. Uh, yeah, but the problem is that the... So I went back and I looked at this after everything, and it turns out that you used a layout which is from my library, which I labeled yeah. Tactile Switch. So I'm pretty sure this problem starts, uh, starts with me here. But yeah, the, uh, the peripherals on these... We have four WS2812s, um, so you, you know, get a little uh, RGB color bar across the top. Uh, I have the eight buttons that you can use as a controller, um, and then there's a bunch of unpopulated pads uh, in case people want to take them to the, uh, the makerspace and hack them, uh, which didn't end up being terribly effective because the makerspace lost a bunch of tools in the warehouse, so they didn't actually really have soldering equipment. So we finished the firmware at 11 p.m. Yeah, and I think that's when we started programming. There's totally this guy here who was just laughing at us, <laughs> like me trying to take all this running to the convention the day before we had to get the badges ready, because uh, uh, Electro shipped them in two separate shipments for us, uh, which I still don't know how they got them done in time, but it was just, it was just spectacular. Here is a picture of a ton of them laid out on the table. We just started pulling them apart, uh, pulling them out of the little baggies and this putting like them half a box, I think. Yeah, yeah, this is half of a box, so. What would this be? This would be like a 14th. So 200 <laughs> badges here? No, 140? Maybe a couple hundred. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. you said multiple, so that'd be... Some of the boxes are different sizes, so it's hard to estimate. Yeah, there are a couple like half-size boxes. But yeah, it was multiple tables full. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so um, actually, hey, speaking of the videos, I do have the video here that I used. Um, oh. This is actually literally what I sent China when I was all panicked and was like, is there any Electro specifically? I say China, but uh, we use China's kind of like the name for the factory. Um, I'm like, yeah, just bend them under. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be just set. Just, I just can't. 16,000 times. Do the 16,000 times. Yeah, just do the 16,000 times. It'll be fine. Uh, and it was not fine. Uh, at any rate, so once we got a couple of them programmed, we wanted to start playing with them. So, uh, well, I don't know. We, we found at least a little bit of time to play with them. Uh, and so the same sort of thing that I showed in my 3D Wi-Fi mapping video, we, um, we kind of did in real life here. Just trying to make it rotate over the same area. Just, I don't know. We had fun with this. Um, we also made Wi-Fi cart, which was a lot of fun. 
Um, this was just. No, 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 actually, no, 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 yeah. So this was just, uh, you, uh, the, just so you guys know, the internet can't hear what's coming out of my speakers and my laptop. Oh, okay. oh. It'll only hear us. So I don't know why I was trying to tell people what to do, because I clearly didn't know what I was doing. But you could totally see, like, if somebody would walk in front, you'd be able to see the, uh, the changes of the Wi-Fi signal on all the badges. Um, this was made possible because we were able to actually make the badges respond to the broadcast packets. Um, and we'll have a story a little bit later about that when... Uh, let's go, go. Uh, we could do the demo with all the badges yeah. behind us. Uh, do you want to do that first or do you want to talk about concerts? Oh, yeah. Oh. So uh, one of the cool applications for these badges was uh, during concerts, we have a guy who's on the lighting board doing all kinds of fancy things on stage. And then we have 2,000 of our attendees have one of these badges hanging around their neck. So I, wrote, I built a little DMX interface, um, and initially we had that sending over the network to our centralized server, which would then uh, unicast color changes <laughs> out to each of the badges in the concert hall. Mm. So this, this is the hardware he used right here. Um, this was a, uh, what was it? It was a, a Raspberry Pi... Uh, Arduino, actually. Oh, it was an Arduino, okay. Yeah, with a DMX shield. So that's an art. Uh, these badges were not part of it. So it started yeah. with just this thing right here. Yeah. And this was an Arduino with a DMX shield, and it was hooked right. into uh, my laptop. Ah. And right. my laptop over Wi-Fi would talk back to our main server, which would then unicast back to every single badge. Because uh, the the original idea uh, was we were going to try to figure out where people were in the venue based on Wi-Fi signal. Um, initial tests were extremely promising. Ended up not working terribly well. We don't really know why yet. We need to go the back. The API to was not kind oh. to me. Yeah, so probably I would give it a request that. and it would just say, "You are nowhere." Yeah. Do you want to talk about this screen? Okay. Yeah. Um, so this screen, uh, the top left, is the data that I'm getting back from the DMX interface. <laughs> so each one of those, that's um, a list of lists. Uh, let's see. What was that? Uh, basically. Uh, the badges were exposed to them as, I think, an array of 12 light fixtures. So the idea was that um, I'd take each badge ID and modulo it by 12 and then assign you to that lighting group. So that way, if they want to do more complicated effects where different people's badges do different things, they could do like half the badges or third or fourth or whatever they want to divide by. Um, so that's the list of light fixtures and all the, uh, the values they gave me. Um, then at the right, uh, 394 oh, concerts. Oh, that's the, the server running <laughs> and is trying to decide how many badges it currently has connected to it. So every time it sees one of the status packets from a new badge, it starts tracking that badge as well. And uh, so that server, every time it got a packet from the DMX thing, which was, what, 20 times a second? Uh, I forget what the DMX standard is. Come in more. It's about that. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's about 20 times a second. It would get a packet telling it what colors to be, and based on this list of, at that point it was like 400 badges, it would just, in a for loop, just send a packet to each one telling it to be that color. And uh, do you have a, did you have the picture of the RAM usage? <laughs> the RAM usage. I'm not sure if it so, got sent. I don't think <laughs> Yeah, basically, this was running it, um, MagFest runs a container environment where um, all of our core infrastructure stuff is running on a Proxmox stack, including the badge server. Um, and we were watching our graphs as we were doing this, and you can see like the CPU utilization just going whoop and, and, uh, and I ram. Had, I had some sort of bug where I was like creating a new object and putting it somewhere where it lived forever every time I got a packet. <laughs> so eventually, the the ram usage graph is like you know it goes like this, and then it's just like 60 gigs, and I was like. Well, this has its own blade, so... So we gave it 96 gigs. <laughs> and then, and it, then went it started up. to kind of work. And it used like 80 gigs before it decided that was enough. Um, but at that point, it was like... Sometimes it would be very quick, and sometimes it would be like 30 seconds between the lighting change. So I'd be like, uh, let me tweak this and run it, and the guy around the lighting board would be like, yeah, it's responding pretty well, and now it's not. 
<laughs> if you guys want to see what it looks like when we for, when we fire up the server every time, uh, it looked like this basically. Oh. Uh, oops, sorry, wrong thing. It looked like this basically every time. So you just click enter, and you just see all of these clients just start connecting into the servers. These are all little badges on our network, just going clickety, 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 just constantly giving the server an onslaught. So once they connect to the server, they would start sending it status packets. So anytime somebody would click a button or do anything like that, they would uh, join the server. That was like Thursday night or something yeah. that that yeah. video was taken. We had actual attendees there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was still fairly early on, so not that many badges have been distributed. Uh, these weren't given to people at, uh, when they registered. You had to actually go pick them up at Merch. So uh, they were distributed fairly slowly. Uh, we never saw too many of them online at the same time. I forget what uh, the actual... The uh, limit was. was like 1,700. No, the limit was like 1,300, I think. Okay. So at some point, I started remembering the badges that were connected <laughs> instead of resetting the list every time, so that helped a lot with the startup. Because they'd be like, oh, I need to change one line. Sorry, everyone. And I have to reconnect to like all 1,300. So what we ended up doing, uh, oh, actually, first of all, the, uh, we tried doing this with an actual like Wi-Fi infrastructure. So this would have been mm. the right way to do it. Um, the only problem is that if you look over here, uh, the channel utilization for basically all of Wi-Fi in the 2.4 gigahertz range was just completely tapped out. We were just completely annihilating the spectrum by trying to talk to all of these badges. And that was just not working. So this is kind of when the point where we're super glad Espressive came in at the last minute and gave us what we needed. Uh, because we were able to go from this to, I don't have a picture of it, but it was like 5% usage. It was almost yeah. nothing. It was yeah. instantaneous. Uh, we, we switched from where, where all of the badges connected to our system to where we would just have, uh, this is actually how we ran it. We, we <laughs> took uh, that, that same controller, whoops, Mark had the controller right there, and instead of wiring it up to his laptop and talking to the server, we just wired it up into these three regular swadges right here, and they would just start broadcasting. So one on channel one, six, and 11, and they would just completely coat the area with, change the colors to this. Um, and I have video from concerts, so I think it looks better. Yeah. So now you can see that once we started broadcasting, they all, uh, at least this wasn't with that many people, but it was like pretty well in sync because it's just sending raw 80211 uh, packets out, just synchronizing everybody's badges up. Uh, swadges, I'm sorry, swadges. Um, and uh, yeah, we can't call them badges because they are not badges. They don't get you into places. Yeah. So that was uh, a lot of fun to get that. So in addition, we also had like the Konami code that people could oh, yeah. enter and then play uh, play yeah. with other. That's um, pretty much it. Once uh, Dylan debugged a bunch of the issues with the server, and it actually did start doing things. Um, we were having a lot of issues with delay, actually. Um, yeah. Like, I got the server running, but, like, at some point, it just started randomly, like, not responding to packets. Initially, I thought it was my code because I wrote my code very sleep-deprived and, like, just trying to make anything happen. And I finally got something to happen, and it was a while after that that I started realizing, hey, like, I'm just not actually getting a packet. So that's when I added like the feedback thing so anytime you pressed a button it would flash red for a second uh, mm -hmm. because that was I think that was just like the beginning of the rainbow and that was the only way I could get it to flash and then go back with a single packet uh, but that that's when we figured out like a whole bunch of issues with like the way Wi-Fi and sleep was mm -hmm. happening and um, yeah we, we reconfigured some of the stuff with like the wireless controller. Um, Charles, I think, knows more about how the sleep works? Or oh, yeah, we should probably mention that. Yeah. So for people who are interested in the particulars of the ESP, um, this was, I guess, a week before, or no, less than that, like yeah. four days, three days before, we uh, we started plugging these up to a power supply and be like, okay, how are we going to save power? Because right <laughs> now, you know, you put the batteries in and they last 20 hours and that's not going to last the whole weekend. We don't have that many batteries. And so if you kill the router, um, so I'm just going to go here, and I know you guys can't see it, 
Uh, but I will badge phi x. No. I'll just rename it. But they're okay. Backwards. So now uh, all of the badges are going to slowly realize that they're not connected anymore. <laughs> and so you'll start to see them uh, drop offline here um, a couple at a time. And what they're doing is they're going into a power save mode where they use 0.3 milliamps. So they could literally last, what was it, like weeks and weeks mm. in this mode. Um, and then every 30 seconds or so, uh, they just decide, okay, you know what, maybe I'm back in range of like the rest of MAGFest again. And so they'll, uh, this is right now deep sleep mode for those of you who know how the ESP works. But they'll wake up and they'll go and now they're all looking for the network and, well, half of them then and half of them now. And they're all looking for the network and as they find out they can't connect, they go from having a little green light on to being completely red. Um, so I'm going to go re-enable the, uh, the Wi-Fi network now. And um, you'll be able to see what happens as they start to connect back in. So right now I've just re-enabled the, the wireless network here. And soon, actually I guess, yep, there we go. So some have just rebooted. And after they reboot, they, uh, as they get an IP, which I'm hoping they'll get soon, Ah, they turn blue. And soon the rest of them, as they get the rest of their IPs from this little microtick, which has no <laughs> idea what's going on right now. It's like a little 2999 microtick. I'm sure it is sufficiently freaked out at the moment. Oh, only about half of them were able to get an IP that time. Oh. Oh. I think those are the other set. They haven't tried to connect yet. Well, uh, I don't know. Um, at any rate, because we were also able to broadcast, um, while those things are getting connected back up, I will show you guys this video. Wait, they're going. They're trying. More of them are trying. Come on. You guys can do it. You guys can connect. Oh, 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 more oh, of them are blue. <laughs> oh, but not all of them are trickling in. They're trickling in. Yeah. Okay, while those connect, I'll show you guys uh, a video we had from a panel um, with the swages mm -hmm. at MAGFest. Um, so let's see here. Everyone, it should all be going insane. And so, so they had a, a mode with an admin badge to show you the second which caused them to go for rainbow, but they also had an RSSI It did already. Okay. Right. Uh, so, so right now, I just looked at the rainbow button, so everybody in the room was receiving my broadcast kind and selling it to rainbow. And what this button right here does is what issue is that this room is right next to all your badges. So there's some lead from those badges also sending broadcasts. To correspond to how so we have to switch it to a different channel. Oh, okay, yes. yeah. So right now I'm holding this up. Um, so everybody hold up your badges. Okay? Now make sure you can kind of see them. And now move them around a little bit. And move them back to where they were. Uh, yes, and they were wired for deep sleep. Very, pretty predictable uh, what those waves look like. If you touch the antenna, the power will go down significantly. Now, I'm going to hopefully be making this available, but I just thought that was one of the coolest things. If you guys want to just play with this song, um, I'm going to hold this down here so you guys don't get as good a signal. So now you all look like, better and you can see a little bit more clear. Small changes in distance make huge changes in signal. This was actually the only one that I was looking forward to. This. Uh, so this is with the admin badge. Uh, it's a badge that can control um, the uh, uh, send out the broadcast packets as the badge itself. So he can just press a button on the badge, and it sends out this rainbow to every single badge. Um, this is what it's doing, like up close. So, so you can't really see the rainbow over there. How are you pressing that? Oh, oh you're pressing it oh. on the oh, <laughs> admin badge. So he's showing you a regular badge, though the admin badge is still in his hand. Um, it has that, and then what we would do just to not be complete jerks and uh, de uh, deplete everybody's battery, when we were done messing around, we would turn them all dim. Um, that way it wouldn't just eat everybody's battery. Um, see, nice and dim with... Uh, I can, you can barely even tell that they're on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, so the other thing was to have an RSSI mode. So right now the color of each individual badge is dependent on how strong the RSSI of the packet from the, uh, the admin badge is. So if I move around you should see it changing where it's uh, 
purple is currently the most powerful, red is the least powerful. So, like, just moving it around a little bit. Or if I go, like, put it in the microwave. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, it's already pretty much red, Mark. Okay, yeah, so you can see how, how far slowly. away I am. Okay, I will slowly move away. Very slowly. Let me move a little closer and come back. Okay, I'm so, now moving away. So this was something I'd wanted to do for a long time, is have many, many ESP8266s in one place to see how they all respond. It's pretty much red now, Mark. Okay, yeah, I'm going back around. You can see how Dylan is causing disruptions in the, uh, the RF spectrum here. So like if I... Your two questions are... Is there CRC on the broadcast or on the, yeah. the receiving I'll end? That in a yeah. And the other question was, uh, did you wire GPIO nine to reset to to do the deep sleep? Oh no, it's GPIO sixteen. Okay, okay. Uh, well, we did wire GPIO that. sixteen to the uh, the reset in order to have it so that we they could do deep sleep. Though we didn't know how to do it at the time, we totally did uh, write some uh, deep sleep code later. Um, oh wow, right that's closer to over here. Yeah. Oh so, wow, yeah. That's, that's a piece of galvanized steel. The other one is on the broadcast. Yeah, uh, nice. You do have to have the CRC as part of the frame in order to actually get it to be transmitted and received. It's not possible to receive corrupted frames, um, 802.11 raw frame. That, yeah. Um, so the ESPs are all on the same network. However, when we do the raw no. mode, no. Um, they, they can just directly transmit across. They, um, there is no reason to. Uh, kind of works. Uh, there's no need to be connected to the network. So one thing that we would do when we were in um, the panel is everybody would move their badge into AP mode, um, which was done, oh, I wish I could remember how. Uh, uh, hold select. Ah, so, so holding select when it boots, um, it switches to AP mode. Um, so that means really slow things. And uh, then it would be uh, possible to change the channel that the AP was on so you can connect to your badge and manually send it packets. Um, so now I'm changing the channel that the AP is operating at. Um, and so that's how we did that. So no, it does not have to authenticate in order for the, the raw broadcast packets to be handled. Bonus oh. feature is flashlight mode. Yeah. So if you hold down uh, left. left. If you hold left, down left the button. and kind of pop the battery in and out, which I'm failing to do. Don't pop it. Just push like it. That. Yeah, but I, I can't. They actually make a fairly effective flashlight. Here, pull. try packing it up. We're pushing it. What? Yeah. Okay, you found the only one that... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm actually... Okay, never forget this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I managed to pick up the only one that it, that has ever not worked for. Um, the code is open. Uh, the code is available at uh, github.com slash cnlore slash art. Swages2017. And so all of the code is available. Everything is here except for the actual password that we used um, for the, the credentials at event. Um, though, from what I've heard, uh, one of you guys said somebody had actually hacked it. So we're probably not going to be using the same credentials again. So right now, they just all connect to test oh. AP and test pass. What? Oh, but then we can't use these ones. Yeah. No, every, well, the idea would be you have to reprogram them for the next event anyway. Well, Oh. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I, mean, I, mean, the, I don't want to use the same broadcast packets either. There's differences I want to change. Okay. Um, goal though would be to make this so they can be used year to year, but they would need to be reflashed to be used at the event. Uh, we can already do that with color core, Jesse. Um, uh, I guess the one thing that I, I'm going to be a proponent of is us moving these outside to play with them uh, in a more open environment to see if that makes much of a difference with the RSSI. Um, not that many people, oh, uh, no, we did not do OTA. Uh, Jill, are you up for moving, helping move them to the lawn? Yeah.
Okay. Might not use something productive. So, um, no, we can't do OTA. We, we thought we were going to do it, but then we just thought it would be too much of a security risk, so we decided not to uh, not to go forward with that. Well, it worked better before. Um, we could put on the solar Any other questions? Or if you guys don't have questions, I'm just going to start moving them out to the lawn myself. Or I better get um, this whiteboard. Yeah, go for the whiteboard. Oh, hey, there's a piece of, like, foam core board or something. You guys can see they're uh, trying to get them out the front door. And if it blows out a window, it'll be worth it. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> 